Believe it or not, guys, I'm really the physical manifestation of what happens when you watch YouTube videos for way too long. Hold on, you were scrolling for way too long now. Maybe you should get some food, get some water. And actually learn how to trade. Uh, and you know, really get a lot of your information from YouTube. Although I say, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't make your investment decisions off of YouTube. That wasn't the case for me, actually. When I first got into cryptocurrency is because a YouTuber actually convinced me uh, to dump my entire bank account into Ethereum at three to seven dollars. Now, this wasn't specifically Datadash, but the point I'm trying to make right now is that Datadash is actually providing the most clear, clear analysis that I have seen in all of cryptocurrency. I mean, we got people going into Legoland, uh, we got people uh, freaking out, panicking. I mean, you can clearly see my channel has been more on the conservative side. Conservative, definitely with altcoins, you know, they're looking really scary. But the point, again, I'm trying to make is that I am not like a macroeconomic type of expert. That's not what I do. I'm a cryptocurrency native. That's where I came from. I actually, again, came from YouTube videos. That's that's how I got started. I started learning how to mine Ethereum, um, you know, when Ethereum was like three to seven dollars, like very early on. Uh, so I just want to come out here and really pay homage to Datadash because through all of this pain, uh, through all of this, you know, war times that's happening in uh, Russia, uh, in, in Ukraine with Russia, he just seems like he has a very clear head and specifically his skill set from my understanding uh, is he's more of like a macro uh, trader and, and he understands what's going on. So I want to draw people's attention to his recent video um, and I, I want to add a little bit to it from my perspective. So you should definitely go watch this video, Bitcoin's Parabolic Moment, why it will thrive in a world of chaos. And just to be clear, I think we should just all pay attention to what he's doing because it's kind of where I'm getting a lot of my inspiration uh, when it comes to my investment thesis in cryptocurrency. So th this is basically the big point that he made, right? If you look at the US uh, composite index, which is basically a market capitalization weighted index of all stocks traded on the NASDAQ stock exchange. So essentially it represents the stock market. I'm sure there's probably a much deeper word uh, <laughs> <laughs> that he can come up with uh, that sounds smarter uh, than that. But clearly, okay, you could see if you weight this against Bitcoin, right? So when this chart goes up, that's Bitcoin. When this chart goes down, um, that's the NASDAQ uh, composite index. You could see that it looks pretty nice, to be honest. It looks like we made some support. Um, I, he drew it, I believe, like this a little bit more. So it, we got this recent bounce, right? And um, this looks pretty bullish. And what he's saying is like, hey, even through all of this fear, this panic, right? Everything that's going on, right? We still have this support here that might actually turn towards us moving to the top side for Bitcoin compared to, of course, the stock market, right? Now, I do want to add to that a little bit because, you know, the big point of what he's trying to make is that, hey, we're in a full on war. Um, you know, Bitcoin's not reacting that bad, uh, to be honest, compared to, you know, other assets or, you know, in some cases, altcoins. You know, Bitcoin's actually holding up pretty nice uh, and it's making support. And I second that. I second that. I've said over and over again uh, in my uh, current thesis that we definitely made, you know, some higher lows and higher highs, right? I think it's very clear that we're making these higher lows and higher highs. So we're coming up to this ultimatum event and it looks like, in my personal opinion, we might make some support um, on this trend line here. Um, and just to add to that, I mean, you know, you guys know what type of uh, investor I am, more of like a narrative uh, investor. I understand marketing from a deep perspective. So if you look back again to history, if we, we just kind of go back um, and kind of look at like the playbook and how um, you know, they essentially ended the market in multiple cases. Um, there's a couple of things that stand the test of time. And this is the beauty of looking into the history, right? And understanding the history of cryptocurrency. And this is what I do well, um, is you can see clearly that there's a couple of things. Something that has to do with an exchange usually ends the market, right? Look, Mt. Gox exchange hack, uh, China bans Bitcoin, but also another Mt. Gox hack, right? Um, we also see a, a CBOE futures launch at the exact top, um, you know, in 2017, um, as well as, uh, you know, China banning Bitcoins and Bitcoin ETF. So 
the Bitcoin ETF was literally the exact top. And it looks like they've pulled out pretty much everything in their playbook. Whoever controls the market has pulled everything out, right? Um, and it's not just centralized exchanges. What we've noticed um, is basically it's usually a big character that either catalyzes the market in a bullish formation or ends the market. It's usually like a big uh, uh, ego character, right? And, and this cycle, it was Elon Musk, right? And it could be a country too. China's played a big role of banning and unbanning like a thousand times, right? So usually there's kind of like a big, uh, I guess you could say entity uh, that pushes the market. It's like a, you know, social currency, right? Social currency uh, drives the market. And then at the bottoms of market, because the hash rate is so low, right? The hash rate is just um, easier to, to kind of fork Bitcoin. You can see that kind of catalyzes a lot of time. So we have three elements. We have, again, the centralized exchanges, right? That have a big role. We have these big forks, right? Bitcoin XT fork, Bitcoin SV fork. It kind of like, you know, started the next bull run, right? And then in the past, it was the Winklevoss twins that were the character that catalyzed the market, right? These three elements, again, character, right? Centralized exchange, forks, these three things, they've pulled out everything in their playbook, right? They launched a Bitcoin ETF. They have the Elon Musk, you know, uh, basically saying he's not accepting Bitcoins for transactions. And, uh, China banned Bitcoin transactions around the same time period. They pulled all of that out and then adding on the war and Bitcoin still has not, <laughs> you know, tanked like 80%, um, even like far after the halving cycle, basically, you know, if you think about it, like, you know, time periods with the Bitcoin halving cycle, it should be over right now. And we should be dropping a significant percentages if you look back into history of Bitcoin. Uh, so with all of these weapons against Bitcoin, I think it's very interesting that we haven't fallen even more, right? And then the fact that Bitcoin's kind of holding up. And then just to add, if you guys go watch that video, just to add really quickly, you know, Ethereum, he's basically saying, Data Dash was basically saying that Ethereum um, you know, is holding up pretty nicely as well, which is typically an indicator for speculation. It's typically a sign of confidence in the market um, that, you know, people are still kind of investing into something that's not just Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin usually um, is a sign of like a, a hedge against monetary inflation or contraction, right? Um, so bringing it back to my current thesis, if you're in fundamental secrets, I made a, a slight mistake, uh, but I do think that this is still playing out, right? Um, the mistake I made is that I got, I'm getting bullish, right? And I know a lot of you have been kind of seeing, uh, the vibes on my channel. I'm getting bullish on Bitcoin. Um, and I kept saying financial sanctions narrative, financial sanctions narrative, but I purchased all coins, which was, was the wrong decision. Right. And, and, you know, phantom dropped and I lost money on phantom. Um, I purchased all coins. I should have purchased Bitcoin. I should have purchased Bitcoin or maybe Ethereum because I still think that, Right now, there's really no other option. They are censoring centralized exchanges. Um, they are censoring uh, specific entities on the blockchain. I've talked about this, Andre Cornier, Phantom. Um, you know, I'm willing to bet they're gonna probably come after more people. This is just the way it is. The SEC has this big, um, you know, that they're investigating all of the influencers in crypto. Um, we have this executive order, this crypto executive order coming out with Biden, which will probably regulate cryptocurrency even more. Um, so again, just adding to everything, I think when there's financial sanctions, when I think they try to censor the monetary system all over the world, people think Bitcoin. They just think Bitcoin because if I'm a billionaire right now, if I'm a billionaire, what other asset is there to go into? I can't think of anything better to go into that is easily moved from country to country. I can cro cross the border, you know, and jump on a plane with $200 million and go somewhere. I can, you know, uh, transact and send it over, you know, across the world for, I've seen billions of dollars get sent for like less than 50 bucks. Like you can't do that anywhere else. And as they keep censoring these billionaires, these people, a lot of money are going to keep asking the question, where do I go? Where do I go and put my money when they control it? Am I actually wealthy? Am I actually a billionaire if they could just seize my assets anytime they want to? And again, I think um, America or whoever it is, I don't know who it is. Um, they are actively trying to censor people and stop this because they are really scared of the mass adoption happening on Bitcoin. So just to bring it home, 
Definitely, I'm paying homage to Datadash. Thank you for allowing me to have a clear mind. Although I don't believe in accepting sponsorships in every video, that is just my personal opinion. If that's how he wants to make money, that's him. Um, but personally, again, I think the point that he made here was very powerful. Powerful enough for me to dedicate a video to it. I'm not a hater. Let's ally up. Yo, hey, Data Dash, we, we're fighting a financial war here. Let's let's join forces, right? Let's join forces. Let's spread the good word of education in cryptocurrency on a consistent basis. I really like what you're doing. Your macro perspective is really good. I think I have a tap on narratives um, and, and you know understanding people very well. Uh, so maybe we can join forces and maybe we can do an interview or something like that. Uh, but what he said was on point, right? Very on point. NASDAQ uh, composite index, right? The US composite index compared to BTC. BTC is holding up. Ethereum is holding up. It should be dumping. If Bitcoin was supposedly speculative, it should have dropped significant. We should be in a full on confirmed. There shouldn't be no question that we are in a bear run right now with the war going on and all of the tax they have brought out. Remember, like I told you guys, they brought out Every weapon in their playbook, all three elements, we have the China ban, Elon Musk, these are entities forcing the market down. They brought out the Bitcoin ETF. These typically end markets, guys. They catalyze markets. And I wouldn't be surprised if they bring out the fork. But the thing about the fork, remember, guys, you can't fork Bitcoin when price is at all-time high because that's when its security is at all-time high. If price is at all-time high, um, that means uh, basically, uh, you know, more miners are mining because there's more profits to make. So they usually try to fork Bitcoin at the at the bottom of the market, and they've tried every single time. And Bitcoin's the most resilient. They cannot change Bitcoin. Clearly, they tried here, they tried here, right? Um, so I'm willing to bet they're going to try next bear run. Number one, and number two, it probably won't. They can't do it at the top, right? So it just brings it back again. If we look at my current thesis. The financial sanctions narrative. As a crypto investor, I can't really think of anything else to go into. Maybe Monero. I'm making a video on that soon, so stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe we can move into Monero because it's a privacy token or whatever the case is. And there's a couple of other privacy tokens that are worth mentioning. But I personally believe that Bitcoin is the safest. Again, they have tried to fork it multiple times and failed multiple times. Ethereum was successfully forked. So they essentially control that. Um, so from my perspective, from Data Dash's perspective, this could catalyze Bitcoin and positive momentum in the long run. We're not talking about short term. I'm pretty sure he's not. He always talks about the long run. So I agree with you, man. Again, let's join forces. Um, yeah, let me know if you want to have a conversation. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Catch you guys in the next video.